Now, in here as well, we can go through and do face detection for taking pictures, or we can take individual pictures of students. Now, if I want to take individual pictures of students, then you can do that. Um, you can determine the size of the picture of the student and everything. And if I were to go through and take each individual picture of the students, you can do that. It does take time. I've done it that way. To do that, I press and hold the student until it highlights, and it pops up these options. And I'm going to go to Take Picture. When I go to Take Picture, it brings up my camera, and I can take a picture. Once I take a picture, it will say on the left-hand side, Retake. I don't like the picture. Or I can use the photo. So right there it keeps that picture. Now it's not a good picture, so I'm going to erase it. I'm going to go through and actually take a picture for you to see and show you what this looks like. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to my individual self, Nick Spencer. That's who I am. I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to reverse my camera so you can see it. Here I am. I'm going to take a picture of it. There's a picture. All I need to do, I can shrink it. I can, max, I can make it smaller just by doing the zooming motion. Now once I have it set and ready, uh, to the bottom right hand corner, I'm going to press, press Use Photo. Once I press Use Photo, there's the picture. The really neat thing is, it, if I've saved my pictures into my camera roll, I can delete it there, and it's, that picture is going to remain there until I delete the class. And so when I go through all the individual students, it will stay there. Really, really, really nice thing to have that way. Now if I want to do face detection, that is a really neat tool as well. If you do face detection, you take pictures of good sized groups of students. So you say take five picture take a picture of five students, and pick a picture of six students. Once I do that, those will be saved on my camera. And now to get the faces into the face detection, we need to do a couple of things. One, you need to adjust your face detection settings on your iDossio app. To do that, I go back to my Adasio settings on the main page, click on that sprocket, open up settings. I'm going to go to image and video, no, I apologize, we're going to go into seating plan. In seating plan, there's some different options here. For face detection, face recognition offset, I, I would strongly recommend to go into a 15, if not higher, that way when you do take pictures and you do face detection, it will have a larger face. You'll have space around the head. If the, you have a smaller number for face recognition offset, then it will be smaller around the face. So you'll get the eyes, nose, and mouth. You won't get the head, the hair, and a little bit of surrounding area. So larger number, the better. I personally like the plant size of 2,000 by 2,000. The choice is up to you to so choose that way. Now, when I'm going through, I can also go back to my class and in my seating charts. Oh, Apologize. When I'm in my seating chart, I'm going to go through, I click on my little tool here, and it's going to bring up the options here. Down at the bottom, I see face detection. That's what we're going to use. You'll also notice that there's a bulk import. Bulk import is if you have a, a large amount of pictures you've gotten from IC download. I personally have not tried that. A lot of the times our pictures are old, so I'm not even going to try that way. So I've got the face detection. When I click on face detection, it gives me options of where I've saved my pictures to. If I go to my photo library, I can go through and pick the pictures I need. Go into my photo stream. I have a variety of pictures. So I'm going to go through. I'm going to click my picture here of my staff the staff in Aurora, I should say, and I'm going to add these faces in. So when I took the picture, I had five people stand there, and now you notice that the faces have a white little box around them. If for some reason there is not a box, or the box is too small or too big, I can easily adjust that by zooming out and zooming in. So I just zoomed out right there. I'm going to zoom out again. Okay. Let's say a student doesn't have a box. I'm going to, going to erase this one. So I have one student without a box. So I'm going to tap, double tap. No, we'll try that again. Sorry, press and hold, I should say. When I press and hold, it gives me a box. I adjust it where it is. I press and just drag. Now it's not very big, so I'm going to increase the size of it. There we go. Increase my sizes. So I've got a big enough box. I'd like to see more than just the eyes and the mouth. I'd like to see their whole face. So I've got that set up. Now at the bottom I see it says use selection. When I press on use selection, 
it brings me back to my seating chart and at the bottom you will notice that I have the faces that I had used for face detection. Now how do I get them to where I need them to go? Well I press and hold. When I press and hold it's going to bring that face up and now I need to find the person that it belongs to. So when I press and hold it I don't let go until I am above the person that it belongs to. So I'm looking through trying to find the people that I need. Looking, looking, looking. I am not seeing Jody, so I'm just going to add Jody into a random person here. So we're going to put Jody at Leah. So we drop in, that's where it would be. Now I know that's not Jody, and if Jody's out there, I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm, you're not popping up here on my CD chart for some reason, so I apologize. But there it is for. Oh, there she is. Alright, so now I have Gina here. I press and hold, drop Gina down. Okay, I've got Desiree here. Find Desiree. having a hard time finding Desiree. We have two Desirees, and for some reason she's not popping up. I think this is an old, old roster, so I do apologize. So I'm just going to drop her in. I have another one here. I have another one here. So when I drag it and I drop it, boom, there it is. Now when I'm done placing all my pictures in here, I press bottom right corner, there's an X with a circle, I press that. It goes away. And when I'm done placing all my pictures in, I can go through my camera roll and I can delete those pictures so I'm not using up memory. And so I've got my pictures here. If I need to see a zoomed in view, I can zoom in and I can see people's individual faces here. Or I can zoom out, just like we talked about before. Bring those fingers in towards the middle to zoom in, out to make it go out. So with our seating chart, we can do a lot of different things, a lot of really neat things to be able to help us out. Also, when I'm in here, I can give student identifiers. This is a really neat tool to have. For example, I'm going to go back to my settings. Oh, apologize. I've got big fingers and a small iPad. So I'm going back to my settings, and I'm going back onto my seating plan. Under my seating plan, I have show student icons. If I click on that to bring that over, then it will help me to do the next thing. I press done, I go back to my students, and I go to my seating chart. Alrighty then. So, oh, I apologize again, I do. Alright, so it seems we like lost our color, I don't know why, but that's okay. So here's what we're going to do. Now to add an icon into a student with what we want to see, I press and hold. I go to the data part and I go to data. Underneath their picture there's a black star. Now I have set up in my icons to mean different things and I'll go through those in another, another how-to. But if I've gone through and set up certain identifiers, for example I have we have our gate, that's our <coughs> gifted and talented students, we have ELA students, my talk, when I say ELA I mean students who do not speak in English, very new into the, into the country, I have medical needs like seizures and different things, it's bad if I have, need to have wait times my, and different icons that I personally use in my classroom, so medical, that's my big thing, especially being a PE teacher, I click on that and it shows up, I press done, and done and now in my seating chart it shows that medical icon there so it's always a reminder of okay my student has a medical need she is a student that has seizures so I need to make sure that I'm aware of that I have another student over here that has a medical issue so I put that in there press done comes up and then I know I have a medical need there as well when I go into that individual student though if I need different information I go into my annotations this student here has had surgery I leave a little note here, it lets me know the student had surgery at the beginning of the year the beginning of the school year on knee so that I know when we're doing different activities and they say, ah, oh, my knee's hurting. Oh yeah, 
they had surgery, so I need to make sure I'm modifying activities for them. It is a great tool to have, a great reminder on that. And also, you can add in a variety of different icons as well. I have different ones that I do that are specific to me. Um, I run programs where I, you know, I have to know if kids have paid and different things, so I have that set up there. So it's really nice to be able to have those icons there as well. Again, this is a how-to on your seating charts and different things you can do there. Um, if you have any questions, please email me or leave comments below of different other of different things you would like to see on the how-tos. Email me at ndspencer at aps.k12.co.us. Or, like I said, leave comments below and I'll get to those as soon as I can and create any more how-tos. Thanks and have a good day.